today we are looking at the role of a woman in building her marriage. Yes. So we've all heard that the home belongs to the woman. So yeah. I want you to take your time and please coach, coach us, or coach us today. What yeah. are the qualities that makes a kingdom wife? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. In fact, first and foremost, I just want you all, all of us to understand that marriage is a, a central point and a key point and most important point, aspect of God's purpose for the earth. I mean, uh, marriage is so important to God that um, that was, you know, he wanted a fellowship, a family, and um, he was the one that uh, institutionalized marriage. God was the one. Marriage is God's idea. So marriage is honorable. God loves marriage. And um, he gave us a symbolism of that in that garden in the beginning, in the foundation of the earth, with Adam and Eve. So if we are going to be looking at the issue of marriage, it's very vast, it's very diverse. Just because a whole lot of things are going wrong does not mean God does not have interest or we should not treat marriage in the most um, sensitive way. Marriage is um, a place of covenant with our spouse and with God. So that is really very important. So when we're talking about the role of the wife in building a marriage, yes, a lot of scriptures, a lot of verses, we have them all over that uh, suggest and tell us um, that all the emphasis of the responsibility of building the home lies on the woman. I have to let you know that, yeah, almost 90% of it is true because the woman was actually created with the man. The purpose of the woman here on earth, and it's very diverse, I, I'm going to break it down a little bit. In that Genesis 2 8, 8, 2, 8, 2 he says, Let us create a offer, a help me. Mm. Mm. So, you know, Adam. So God actually created specifically the woman for a purpose. If I need to ask about the purpose of the woman, first and foremost, outside every other thing we are doing, our purpose was set from that foundation. And when we are talking about the man, we are talking about the totality of the man, not just the man as a real person. Because after the community so we are talking about to be a better of man and a better of man. So that's the role of the woman. So when we are talking about the context that is an important So before people the children come along, for anything, go what the woman from ball. And when you bring somebody on board to be a helper, can you help somebody that um that means before you can help somebody, that means you have ability, ability, character, all the qualities that puts you in position so that the other person who has contact and other person in an area where it cannot handle. That is the worst thing. So you have been brought from board to help you not just marry, marry, help you the life of a man and marry to all that God has ordained that you will help. So I don't know. That means that there are different things that this people are going to give them. Because a lot of men miss out on this, this is a lot of people, a lot of abuse, a lot of situation, and God did not um, well, now comes into the picture and the arrangement my time to do that. First of all, just know that you are your husband's help. Mm. Yeah. You were created for that purpose. That is the purpose of life. That is the role of 
all you to do. Then how do you begin to help your people? And if you have a strength, more than supporting an area to help the person. And remember also, the only other person that has been to help to us is to stop the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So a woman carries the attributes of the Holy Ghost to be able to help God's class here on earth through a man who affects the whole of the And before you find before you know, men and men, men come in kingly and leadership authority, even though they have been created to help them, they are kings. They are they are such authoritative people that if you do not understand that, they will even resist you in the role that God called you to perform in their life. That was the second, so, that was, yeah, because I really want off. It's so yeah. important. This is so important mm -hmm. because that's the next question I was going to ask you that in most marriages, yes. even in relationships, mm -hmm. gender yeah. roles are not always clearly defined. You know, yeah. um, I, there's a sound. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you can uh, come closer to you so we can hear clearly because the sound is going and out. Yeah, God bless you. Yeah. So this is so important because for our viewers that are hearing us, both men and women, it's important for gender roles to be clearly defined even in the, in the in this time of dating and if you're already married because when these things are not clearly defined they can cause confusion they can yes. cause friction between the man and the woman because in, in, in the mind of the woman she has her own thinking that okay these are the things that my husband should be doing and then the man is saying but this is what my wife should be doing. And in the era that we live in, gender roles are sometimes um, uh, different from where we are coming from, from our own parents' era or our grandparents' yes. era, where yes. it was just all the man needed to do was just go out there and work hard and bring in the money. The woman yes. clean, the woman cook, the woman takes care of the children, the woman goes yes. to the farm. Things have changed. And yeah. it will be disastrous to that relationship if yes. both parties, both the man and the woman, still have yes. that archaic thinking. So yeah. the, the question I wanted to please talk about this thing is, um, uh, what is the woman's role in building her marriage whereby she doesn't have to carry her own role and then add it to the man's role? Because I've seen in cases where the woman is playing her own role, She's also playing the man's role because maybe because there's a huge gap. Because either yeah. the man has not fully stepped in into his own role or the woman has not fully stepped in. So today we are looking at the role of the woman because next week, by God's grace, we are we're going to have uh, uh, Dr. Duwale is coming on the program and we're going to be yeah. looking at the role of the man too. In a marriage yeah. that we can, let's define the gender role so we can have a beautiful, strong marriage. Please talk to us, woman of God. <laughs> okay, first and foremost, it's always very important. Everything about a marriage, you see, marriages are dynamic in different ways. One like marriage that. does not look the same to the other. Mm -hmm. And marriage has to do with individual uniqueness and personalities. Mm -hmm. So a, before you go into a marriage, First and foremost, the man of the house must be able to educate the wife that is bringing into his life about his vision. Because the woman has been called in to come and help her. You have to educate her. You have to make her understand who you are. That is where worship is really very important. She has to understand who she's coming in Apart from God already educating her as a kingdom woman, because usually, oftentimes, women have, I'm talking about descending women, matured Christian women, kingdom, true kingdom women, already have information from God about the man that God is going to give to them. Then when that woman comes into that environment, they have to have a conversation about the sort of life they want together. That is very key. That is very key. 
God Almighty, even in his relationship with Adam in that garden, they had a conversation. He ah. told Adam what he wanted. I am giving you this kingdom, this garden, and I have provided everything for you. Mm -hmm. Everything for you. And remember, Adam is representative of the church, the body of yes. Christ in that garden. And so, and the body of Christ is a marriage with God. So they had a conversation. God being the head of Adam, as also the husband being the head of the wife, must be able to have a conversation of his expectation of that union that they are going to have together. God had a conversation with Adam. I'm giving you this whole kingdom. I have provided everything good for you to eat it there. You have animals, you have the fruits, you have herbs, you have water running, you have everything. But the only thing in all of this thing that I'm handing over to you, please, you see that tree in the middle of that place? Do not touch. The day you talk, thou shalt surely die. They had that conversation. They had an understanding of that what of that of what that marriage is all about because it was a marriage. So, first and foremost, a woman must understand her role through the eyes of her husband, mm. through the vision that the husband had for bringing her into that environment. God had a vision before he brought Adam into that environment. He had a vision of how he wanted the earth to be. He had a vision of what the sort of relationship he wants to be having with Adam, just like himself, a unlike relationship for Adam to act like him, for them to be like him. So they had that conversation. But somewhere along the line, that conversation was not well related to the wife that came into the garden. Mm -hmm. Was not well related. So a conversation is very important in any union, in any coming together. So God and that, that authority, that environment, that kingdom over to Adam. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay, I will bring you a woman. In helping you actualize this old vision that I've given to you. So now God trusted that Adam as the head, as the leader of that kingdom, will be able now to transfer that information and have that same conversation with the woman he has given to him. So that was broken. Conversation is important in every level of relationship. Without conversation, nobody will know, understand their roles. Nobody will understand their function. One will clash with the other. So first and foremost, Adam was first created before he was created. Adam is the leader, the husband that was placed in that environment. And Eve was sent in to come and assist him to fulfill purpose. And I is she going to do that? Because like I said earlier, if you don't understand the man's vision, you cannot even help him. And if you, you can't help him. You can't help him because there'll be clashes, there'll be confusion. So these are the first and foremost, we must have this conversation. And for a man, because men are so, like I said, they are, they are kings. That's how God uh, uh, created them. And they are so egoistic. I'm sorry to use that word. Men, their egos are so big that if a woman does not understand how to navigate a man's ego, even the assignment you have been sent to do in their life, they themselves will truncate it for you. And, you have to do it. and how do you build that for them to begin to trust you enough to surrender to you? Because marriage is submitting to one another. That is what the scripture says. I don't know why people always hammer on just the other side of the scripture that says, wives submit to your husband. The, that same scripture, if you look before that very verse, also says, submit one to another. Yes. Before the man can submit to you, these are the things you must be, to be able to build, build your home and your relationship. You must first respect your husband. Though you are a helper, if you don't respect him, he will not submit to you for yeah. you to be able to perform that function in his life. We are talking about the role of a woman now, the kingdom woman in building a home. First and foremost, what a, the most important thing a woman, a man needs for a woman, from a kingdom woman or any woman at that matter, is respect. If you don't know how to respect 
your husband. You cannot, you cannot, that, that thing will not make it Submission, like I said, is both sides, but first and most importantly, when you respect your husband, he also respects you. You must be aggressive, but you must notice him too. You must regard your husband. You must honor him. You must prepare him above others and always make him to know that he's prepared. And you must esteem him. It means valuing his opinions, admiring his wisdom, his wisdom and character, appreciating his commitment to you, and considering his needs and values. Because, like I said, the king is a man will not because it's not first and foremost you must force of me. And in making him to be able to respond to you, you must be able to submit to him at all levels. And husbands have many needs. Have many needs. So, and the master that is in them is self-contained, independent and invulnerable. And that is who they are. That is how they are, they are viewed. But you must help a man to build his self-confidence in his relationship with you as the wife. You must be his best listening partner before any other person. In fact, if you are in a marriage and your husband has another person that he can consider to be the person you to do, then that is your failure as a well. You must Re repeat, repeat that again. Repeat that again. Okay. When you are in a marriage and you leave your husband, or there's a situation where your husband prefers and says there's another person that listens to him better than you concerning his matter, then that is where trouble starts. Wow. You wow. be the one he wants to listen to. That you know that that he knows you will listen to him all of the time. You must be your husband's best listener, no matter what it is. Your husband must find comfort and confidence to know that he can come with you and discuss any subject, and you will not come up with that aggressiveness of a woman to push him away. He will know that I know. Yes, there might be frictions in some of these things I want to discuss with my wife. But there's one confidence I have in her. She will listen to me. Though she will rebuke me, but she will still listen. Wow. And we will pray about this and work it out together. In fact, a man should be so confident in knowing and having faith that the woman will listen to him even when he has committed some grave atrocities. As big as even the issue of adultery. A woman should have that strength of confidence in the wife that I have missed it. And I know I have to discuss this with my wife. Though she will be angry, though she will rebuke me, but I know that because I know she loves me, because I know she also honors me, we will find a way of working this out. You but, know? Yeah. Go on. What you are saying is so yeah. powerful. It's so powerful that it can literally save a marriage. Yeah. The reason, and I'm sorry for uh, stopping and you there, because I'm not supporting adultery in any way. Oh, definitely, definitely. Oh, what yes. I'm saying. I mean, yeah. we. I understand what you're talking about because marriage is not going to be rosy, rosy all the time. Yeah. The same way we have different season in the earth realm, yeah. so also yeah. it's life. We will have yeah. some dark season. So yeah. that we'll have the light season. Yeah. And why we're talking about these things is to help us not to yes. just throw in the tower, not yes. to just to give up. I always yes. say to people that the only time, the only time Victoria Michaels will say to a woman, leave a marriage, is if you are in abusive, serious, yes. abusive okay. relationship no. where your that's... life is at stake. Get out. Apart from that, I don't believe that there's anything that's not workable. Mm -hmm. You True. know? There's nothing that is not workable. Yeah. Nothing. In marriage, that is why even Jesus said, when he even gave the grounds for divorce in a marriage, 
He said, okay. Um, when they asked him, what are the, the grounds of divorce for a marriage? He said, and he said the issue of adoption. Then he now put a caveat. He said, but you can even still decide to forgive. Oh, yes. Oh, if yes. You forgive, if you yeah. are able, that is if you are able to. If you are not able to, he won't hold it against you. But yeah. it's also very important that you forgive. Mm -hmm. Keep it and, and if the love is strong enough, love forgive all things. Love. Love and friendship, woman of and God. Love and love friendship. Because and I've friendship. seen, yeah, many couples that are married, but there's no friendship. And I'm always yeah. telling people, build yeah. on friendship. Because sometimes you feel like I don't longer love that person. But what yeah. will sustain the relationship is the friendship. Yeah. If you have developed a friendship, the reason I stopped you quickly when we we're talking about that is that uh, uh, when you're talking about the husband mm. having the confidence in his wife mm. to be able to talk to her about anything, and the woman be being a, a uh, having this the listening ear, I stopped yeah. you because as powerful as what you are saying is, and it's so it's such a, a powerful trait. I want our viewers to also know it's a skill that you can learn because it's not a skill that just come naturally for yes, everybody. Yes, and it's true. not everybody that knows how to listen. You can yes. be hearing and not listening. I'm not listening. <laughs> exactly. And yes. then personality also come to play. Some yes. people have natural aggressive personality. Hey, they are yes. they, 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 they respond to everything. Hey. Their yes. heart might be soft. They might even it, want to love the person, but that aggressiveness can yes. make the other man to make the man to think that oh, she's gonna condemn me. So I yes. want our viewers that are hearing us to know the reason we are talking about this subject is that we can relearn so we can relearn bad habits and we can learn uh, yes. uh, new habits. So yes. we can put it to play like from today now. All of us, including me, Victoria Michaels, let's start reading books, start looking uh, 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 information, and of course, yes. pray. Ask the Holy Spirit, can you please teach me how to be, uh, uh, to be, to listen more, to listen yes. more. I remember this morning when we were praying. One of the prayers we were praying for ourselves was that Lord, I said, Lord, I want you to change me. I want you to make me a better woman. Uh, yes. Just help me to work on the weaknesses. So our viewers, what the woman of God said about being that woman, that woman that your husband can come to, we know that there are some difficult men. There are some men that when they are married to the woman, the next thing is that she's neglected. They are looking for uh, uh, female friends, which I might talk about next week because I don't believe that with a marriage relationship, the man he should have other women that are his best friends. The moment you have other women that are your best friend, you are using your own hand to destroy to your talk. home because to every small talk. problem you are yeah. going to your female best friend and you are making your wife insecure. Woman of God, what do you have to say about that? That is very key. That is very powerful. Not that you cannot have female friends, but your best friend, like I just as I said, your best companion and the person that should be the first person to listen to you more than any other person should be your wife. Mm -hmm. You cannot say you have somebody else out there that listens to you more than your wife, and your best friend should be your wife. And that actually lies in how both of you build your fellowship with each other, yeah. build your bonding with, with each other. Um, marriage is a work by two people. It's not just, okay, I'm married to you now. Okay, now... Uh, you just if you don't do this, it's a walk. So every day, us. every day walk. Every day, walk, every day. Mm -hmm. dying itself daily. Dying not because what you're about to die to is convenient for you, but mm -hmm. dying so that both of you can, you know, uh, compromise and meet each other halfway. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is what marriage is about. My God, dying and meeting each other halfway. So that the union can be blissful. That Ooh. is what marriage is all about. My then, God. I you know, like like I was uh, I was saying, it is also key for for the woman to love her husband unconditionally. Mm. You know, 
Titus 2 4 calls for the wives of though God told you know man love your wife in Titus 2 4 God also calls for the wives to love their husband a good description of the kind of love your husband needs is unconditional acceptance give your husband for a godly woman concerning a marriage you must be able to accept all of us, we are preaching to ourselves too, as we are talking like this. Yes. <laughs> able to accept, you know, strong women have a problem in accepting any man that God has given to them unconditionally. So that's why I say we are preaching to ourselves. So we must learn to accept a man unconditionally. If you call that man and accept that man to be your husband. First and foremost, you must love him unconditionally. And you must be willing for you to be able to be a kingdom woman that will play a role properly in a marriage. You must be willing to submit to the leadership of your husband. Because before, that, before you continue on the leadership, because that's also very powerful, can I yes. quickly say something about the woman yes. loving her husband unconditionally and about the strong women? I am yes. a strong woman. And oh, yes. I'm strong in the sense that um the situation don't break me down like that but emotionally i'm soft my heart oh, is yeah. soft. No, that that is that is the key thing about a lot of strong women they are actually very soft people very very soft people. yeah yeah so the thing about unconditional for strong women especially a lot of strong women are perfectionists to some extent i know that for years I was a perfectionist. I like everything done excellently to the T. I want the everywhere to be that and to be that. God, yes. I had to recognize it and say, God, help me to balance. And in yes. that case, most strong women, once they are men, they, they, they also bring that perfectionist to the relationship. And if it's yes. not handled, uh, handled uh, uh, correctly, it can break the relationship because the man will not feel like, oh, you are trying to control me. You are trying mm -hmm. to control me. Unknown to him is because of that perfectionist nature. For most of these women, they are hard on themselves. So they are also hard on the people that come into their lives. They want that perfect. They also want them to be perfect. But when you're yes. talking about the unconditional love, I want our viewers to know you cannot love someone deeply without forgiveness playing oh, a major yeah. role yeah. all the time. The man will if get I, on your nerves. The man will offend you. The man I, will lie to you and all those yeah. things. You have to be able to go back to the cross, die like she said, to forgive. Yeah. If you don't forgive, love can come out. And most of relationship, when you start mm -hmm. out, it's not based on love. It's based on lust. It is yes. being able to go through this season of trials and challenges that yes. the genuine love comes out from. So I want to say to the women hearing us, it's, it's you can do it, but mm -hmm. you're going to have to keep going back to the cross, saying to God, Holy Spirit, teach me how to love this man in his imperfections, in all yeah. that he has done to me. Because the flesh will say, kick him out, discard yeah. him. But the Holy yeah. Spirit will say, I have something good in him. You know, I yeah. know when the Holy Spirit speaks to me, I said, no, you can't discard this person because I can work in this person. So I just wanted yeah. to say that quickly before you continue about the subject of submission to that man in order to build your home. Please, woman of God. Marriage is actually a relationship of two forgiving people. There's no way you can survive in marriage without forgiving people. Mm. Because there are two personalities from different backgrounds, different ways of understanding issues or seeing things speak together. Yeah. So there will always be a rubbing of a rubbing of, of each other. It's like grinding, you know, grinding on the on the millstone with the, you know two stones rubbing against each other. We are we are we are we are, we are, we are stones we are together. So mm -hmm. there will be sparks. So it's how you handle these facts in marriage that is so important. But if we remember that in marriage, everything there is has to be given to you. Make it clear that it's not about us, but about God. And if you understand that your spouse has been given to you by God to nurture as 
a woman vice pass in the month of culture uh as the wife also then forgiveness is easy so you are seeing to that person when they make mistakes to your own eyes you are seeing them to the eyes of god and mm. how god is also forgiving you all the time because we go to account for each and every one of us the way we do it also all of it i don't think anyone of us to stand and you know oftentimes that's what god wants us to do anytime uh, people offend us and especially in this relation in this uh, case of marriage god speaking us to remember how he forgives us all of us so forgiveness in marriage is a, 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 a you know a place of food for him so that being said i was talking about leadership a woman must understand oh, very important the key, the key word with women is that in as much as we are all individuals and we have our unique identity individual we mm-hmm. must all the time recognize that the role of the man in the marriage leadership and that's why i will always say to women and young people who want to marry and if you are don't try somebody you cannot submit to. You cannot don't do it. Mm. Don't, don't do it. That's the key from the end of our most of people. There will be the issues of marriage do not do not command marriage. It enlarges them. It's pronounced. Any issue you deal with with marriage, if you think those issues are going to be you know, they are going to be magnified inside of marriage. So if you use a good leader to mirror your lives together before marriage, don't even go into it. So you must be able to know that you are going to submit to your husband. Everything about that submission is in the book of Ephesians, right? Third, which is the place that won't read all the verses, but it's six, it's on a seat. Why? Subject to your own husband as to the God. So the husband is the head of the wife. As Christ also is the head of the church. So God is the head of order. There is order in the kingdom. In the heaven, in the, in, in, in the heavenly realm, where the church is there is order. There is order with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So they are different. They have their different roles. They, 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 they have their different activities. But the fewest things in the world, both not have the whole. Yes, and so the so for the husband is the head. So the role of the husband is you are the head of your of your, of your outfit. And this is the more instructional how you want your outfit to run. How you want your outfit to run, then there will be heads in that house. And I will give you an example of a friend uh, you know, who was chatting sometime in the week about this. And then when I married my wife, I, I sat her down and told her what I want, my home. What I do, I go in my home. As far as I'm doing, what kind of thing? there are some things sort of uh, um, reading my materials. I will not allow you to read in the home. So he already communicated what he wants in the environment, just the way God communicated to, to Adam, and that is very the other conversation. I don't want, I don't want some gossip like a thing. I don't want you to watch some oh, TV channels that you have to watch. If it's not about building you spiritually, educating you about different areas of life, if there are channels that will keep you to watch, you are not going to watch it or you have TV in any way in our home. And when he was telling me all this point, he, he, he sounded funny, but he has already laid down the ground rules. Oh, which is yeah. good mm-hmm. yeah so it's up to you to say you know what i don't think i can take it yeah i can take this one but if you both have that conversation you better adhere to it because that would be the beginning and the end of dying of death of that marriage dying which was the same thing that happened in that garden it was when adam violated the conversation and end of the conversation that god had made that death broke up so all of these things are very important. You must submit it most submit to the leadership of your husband. Woman when, of God. Yeah. Man, this is powerful. 
even though mm. the time is almost fast spent, I'm just going to yes. extend it because it's like so much to discuss. It's so, no, if I have not I, much... I'm not even going to. I have to extend this for us to continue because yes. these things we are talking fun. about are so powerful. They can yes. prevent future trouble in marriage. Yes. And it can over and it can turn a dying marriage back to life. This is so powerful. Transparency, transparency yes. in the yeah. relationship before, like you say, the man yeah. said, Look, these are my grand rules. This is who I am. Yes. I am not yes. because, like you said, everybody has their own way of doing things, everybody yes. has their own personality. But yes. one of the major problems I have seen uh, is lack of transparency yes. when people are dating uh, and either the, both of them or one person is not completely honest oh, yes. with the other True. person. Say, you know what? Uh, uh, listen to me. I'm not gonna, yeah. I don't like this. Yeah, I don't like that because yeah. if you don't communicate, and again, if I may say this, please, for those of you that are listening to that listening to us and i'm glad that we have both men and women online yeah so we are talking about the role of the woman in building her home we want the men that are hearing us to know that when we talk about submission submission is not demonic control god did you not know. say control your wife when it's so that the wife can you can't force a woman to submit to you there must mm -hmm. be guidelines like the one of God is saying. If you're not communicating clearly with your woman to let her know, I don't like this. I don't like yes. that. This is my expectation. Of yes. you. And then yes. the woman, the man also should ask the woman, what yes. are your own expectations yes. from me? Exactly. It's not one-sided. Can we no. just talk about this thing? The yes. woman is not a slave to her husband. No. She's a no. helpmate. Yes. They have made not a slave. The no. woman, but this care, bro. I'm telling you, I'm going to. We are going to continue to talk. The mm. woman, if God is bringing you a man to help you, how can she produce? How can she use a womb to help you break your destiny? If you are controlling her, if you are maltreating yeah. her, if you are sitting yeah. on her, and you are yeah. kissing her, cussing her out, and do, and, and you don't, you, you just, you, you don't listen to your woman. You can't mm. get the blessing from that woman that God wants like, you to like, like we said earlier, is is submitting one to another. And if we have to come to a place of the man um abusing the wife, the marriage covenant is already broken from there. And the blessing will not flow. It will not flow. Because he, if you abuse your wife, then the ground for that marriage is already violated. Mm -hmm. The covenant that holds that union together is already broken. Christ gives an example of his um, of himself with what marriage is in and the church is all about. And on the side of Christ as the person of the church, because we have to keep looking at the model that Jesus Christ gave to us. That's how I look at these things. We have to continue to look at the model. Christ was the one. So that brings much responsibility of building that house. After the woman has done all our rule and explain all our rule. The onus also lies on the man for the marriage to succeed. You must know for her. You must be willing to die for her. Mm. Even Christ died for the church. Mm -hmm. Christ is not into the church. Christ is not abusing the church. Christ loved the church so much that he died for her. The mm. church represents the wife. The church represents the body. A wife, your wife is part of you. When you beat her, you are beating yourself. Mm -hmm. So, abuse of in a covenant that holds that church together has already been violated and broken. Because yeah. the essence of that relationship is law. So, yeah. for me, this area, that's another thing entirely. You just don't talk about love. Now, yes. More, uh, and uh, with all love and respect for all our African men and fathers, I already yeah. said that we honor you all. But yeah. when a man says, I, I don't know, I've heard evil preachers, men mm. that are preaching on the people, they said, hey, but I don't know how to love my wife. I'm uh, like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you, how can you say you don't know how to love? Okay, oh. or you say, oh, but I, I love you, that's why I married you. I love you, that's why I'm providing a, you have no, a house, I give you a house, I give you food to eat. But uh, how can you say a woman that uh, a woman you married, you are telling her, shut up. 
you are abusing her you are downgrading her she doesn't have a voice if she tries to talk you shut her down that is a that is an abuse there is no love in that and if you are doing that god cannot bless that marriage god cannot even bless that man and for yeah, the but, men that are listening to us but, i want you to do something today I scripture want to... is clear on that eh? i said scripture is clear on that if yes if your wife is not at peace with you even even we shut up on you now if you like pray today to tomorrow your prayer is not going anywhere it will stop going anywhere yeah yeah <laughs> and I, I i need the men to know there is nothing that we cannot learn love is christ's nature especially yes. for we that are christian we must yeah. learn that nature and when you're talking about love if you really love a woman you be, you show her kindness mm -hmm. if you love your husband you will show your husband kindness if you love yeah. your spouse you will be forgiven no matter what they do you will be quick to forgive if you love yeah. your spouse you will not look into your spouse's eyes and be degrading him or be degrading her i need people that are hearing us pray for self-control please control yeah. your mouth the bible says in the proverbs 18 21 that life and death is in the power of the tongue men stop cursing your wives stop telling her she's stupid stop telling her that you are foolish stop telling her shut up when i'm talking i am the yeah. head woman stop insulting your husband because these words are spirits the moment you release them they go forth to produce so let's if if we are going to have a kingdom peaceful marriage that the blessings of god will flow love must be present where there is love there'll be respect where there is yes. respect there'll be unity yes hallelujah so that is it um so much to talk about this this topic is on ending and um I, I think our time is really fast spent no no so, no, no. i'm not looking at the time i want us to extend a little bit because this thing i we need to talk about this thing so that marriages can can sweetness peace can be restored to marriages to home i want the men to know that it's not the woman is not a slave and i want the woman to know you have your role to play just like yeah. your husband have a role to play if everybody yeah. is playing their role individually yeah. with the fear of god with the love of christ why would they be a peaceful home why would they be mm -hmm. a good relationship mm -hmm. and even if the trouble comes they will hold hands together to pray yeah. together and, pray. and to yes and the pray the pray like i said like i said and i will keep um reiterating on that the conversation in marriage is very important. Very communication. Very communication is very important. Mm -hmm. If that has broken down, nothing is too late. You can always go back to it. My you God. can come back together again, sit down and say, Look, there's a lot of things going on in our lives in home in this marriage. Then let each partner humble themselves sit down and have true conversation on the state and where they are in their relationship present admit sincerely where each one has reached it i'm talking about people that are willing to keep in their marriage and for a kingdom woman you should also be able to stick to the place of prayer seeking the place of god to bring healing to each other you, you don't go in our business you don't say because it's not in God's uh, will not be, God does not want any marriage to break up. Nobody mm -hmm. sets out marriage for mm -hmm. you to break up. But when it happens, that is how mm -hmm. that is not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And this I always and when I'm praying to women and I'm trying to encourage women, I found themselves in both marriages or they are single for one reason or the other. Um, I always try to encourage them with the passage in the book of God. Then, let's see, uh, I will go to that. I want to bring out Genesis. Um, we are not hearing you clearly, woman of God. Please speak to the mic. Oh, you are you are not hearing me now. Now, uh, now I can hear. So, if you speak to the mic, yeah, I can hear you now. Oh, okay. Sorry, I say I want to bring out a point in the book of Genesis. Uh -huh. I think uh, Genesis. Can you hear me now? 
Yes. Okay. So Genesis um, 24, and I'm talking about women that might find themselves in situation. I'm trying to encourage women that either their marriage is broke up mm -hmm. or for one reason or the other, or they are single for one reason or the other, and that they decide to be rejecting them or looking down on them and they themselves might be looking down for themselves. I want you to know that in God, God has always given opening for the restoration of women. Yes. The only that they find themselves in. And if you have tried your best in your marriage for one reason, for one reason and it is not work, the one who created you in the first place is always available. Mm -hmm. You bring your own life, individual development, back into the restoration. So you must not give up on yourself because marriage is a two way thing. So if you have no work and you tried your best and eventually break, there's an opening for you in that garden for you to go back to God and and it's really to receive it. I, I don't want to go to that. It's in the book of three, but point four. But how God still gave an opening a room for the woman to be able to always come back into the garden. But, um, uh, he made a choice to go with her, with her husband. That is because she was really talking about covenant God concerning the relationship she put her into. So for the woman, be patient with your husband. For the man, be patient with your wife. It's a two-way thing. Yes. Well, it's the Both of you will build it together. But most importantly, the woman has to understand that the role was given to her to be the helper of her man, her husband, which we often ultimately translate to helping the population of people on earth. Because from that union become a family, from that union become a nation, from that union become a generation. So yeah. you are the man. You are the, you are the helper of man and the helper of mankind. And I pray that God will give every woman the patience to be able to navigate our role Amen. properly in love, in submission, and in patience. But like I said earlier, men, their ego, are, their ego are so very large. <laughs> so, and you see, that is that is very key in 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 marriage. Men have such big egos and that is not um, putting them down in any way because they are kings and if you are not sensitive as a woman to understand the sort of personality trait that comes out of your husband when that ego aspect of him comes up you will trample upon it and it will resist you men will resist you when you don't know how to rub their ego when you need to that is the sensitivity sensitivity of who you are as a woman to build up your husband's confidence. Mm -hmm. You need to know when to rob them even when those things are coming up. Even when they are wrong in what they are saying, there's a way you can rob their ego and through that you make them see reason with what you are trying to make them see. My God. My you God. Reason. And everything comes in the place of submission and humility. And it depends on how you even present the matter to them. There's nothing you cannot get a man to do. That is, you know, like, <laughs> there's, there, there's this preaching that I always preach. Everything about a woman is a weapon. Everything about you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet is a weapon that God has created for you to be able to undo your man. The way you talk to him is a weapon. Your beauty is a weapon. Your appearance to him is a weapon. The way you prepare his meal is a weapon. The way you present the meal is a weapon. The way you smile at him is a weapon. Everything about you, but it depends on how you use it with wisdom. Right. You can get in as a man just be eating from the palm of your hand. My God. My God. Man of God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we women, including me, we have work to do. <laughs> we have work to do. And it's patient. It's, you see, we, and the thing is, we can ask the Holy Ghost. You see, I, I just love the Spirit of God. There's nothing the Holy Ghost cannot do. The Holy Ghost will teach you how to dress for that your man. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost will teach you even how to do your hair for the special peculiar man that is given to you or he has given to you. Mm -hmm. 
The Holy Ghost will teach you. And what now remains for you is will you submit to the leading that is given to you? That's always the problem. The Holy Ghost will teach the woman all things. Even the sort of food he likes, the one who wants if you if you forget as the spirit of God, he will teach you. Even when the, the man is coming in that is kingly attitude and that is egoistic attitude, and you want to the spirit of God and tell him this is how he's doing, he will tell you how to navigate. That is what you are created for. A woman is influential in all areas. My God. Ooh. Oh, Apostle Elisha, man. Mm. <laughs> you, you messed us up in a good way. You messed us <laughs> up in a good way. And and for some of us that we we want to be better to bring honor to the name of the Lord, it's work. Mm. So we mm -hmm. are going to start. I'm going to ask you, man of God, please, you have to pray, and I'm going to encourage you. I know yes. you are busy, but you have to come back on the conversation. Yes, yeah. just, we will look at the time. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to come back again because we've not talked most of the topic we wrote down. So God will help us to, to finish it up. Ooh, <laughs> you have to come back. You have to yes. come back. I like this kind of subject, especially today that we are talking to us, we women. You know, yeah. because sometimes, like you say, men have ego. We women too, we have ego. You know, no, we, 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 we have we, them. We yeah, say, we do. I, I want but my husband just... to love me this way. I want my husband yeah. to talk to me this way. I want my husband. Yeah. And so we want our husband to treat us this way, but how are we presenting it to the man? For oh, exactly. To hear that, us? Is, that is the key thing, the presentation. I, we can get, you can get your husband to do anything, but the presentation matters. You have been so, endowed as a woman, but the presentation is now. And one of God. <laughs> You're coming back. This is part one. Part two yeah. of the coaching. You are coming back. Let's let to so come and coach us women again. But I want you to take a, a time, please. I want you to pray. Pray yeah. for as the Holy Spirit will lead you. Yeah. Right now, the information today, they are so powerful. Some women are even overwhelmed, like, oh Lord. So I'm feeling guilty. Oh my God, but I'm so sorry for, for, for messing up this way uh, because they didn't know better. I want you to pray that one, yes. that the Holy Spirit will help us to forgive ourselves and yes. also let the Spirit of the living God come and teach us. Teach yes. us, you know, if I, if I may say this thing quickly before you pray for us, is yes. that life experiences has a way of altering somebody's behavior. When yeah. your woman has been battered from childhood, battered, yeah. battered, self-rejection, uh, yeah. uh, low self-esteem, it comes across in the way they behave. They might yeah. have a pure heart, they might have a go hard, but that yeah. now comes out. And like, you know, I find that you a lot of strong women, aggressive women, they are mm. dead because of where they are coming from and they are trying to protect themselves. They don't want to be hurt and they're in, in the yeah. process they create more havoc for themselves. So yeah. Holy, let the Holy Spirit use it. Please pray for our viewers. The, the truth is there are a lot of broken people, but the oh. reason of different um, um, situations that they've been through in life, there are a lot of women, a lot of women are broken. That is the Many. truth. Because yeah. we, the part of the enemy is always major on the woman. And yeah. that uh, comes from every space of their life. Yeah. From being, from uh, from childhood, mm -hmm. from relationships, the enemy just targets the woman, and yeah. um, the woman, most men now carry all of this malfunction into adulthood, and they transfer it into various aspect of their existence. Then when they now come into marriage, they are still carrying this brokenness. But I'm talking to such people right now. That wherever you are, especially in your marriage, that you are still dealing with a lot of brokenness in your life, I am asking God to restore you back to the place of normalcy in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I am asking that any daughter of yours that is going through any issues by the reason of trauma they are being through in life, at the very next level, you are the healer. You are the power in Gilead. I'm asking you to push down into the life of those broken women. And every seed that the enemy has thrown into their lives, through any way, 
experiences of the life life issues that we are going through. I'm asking you that all of these things that are formed because of their character manifestation that is affecting other areas of their lives. This thing will be uprooted right now and the effects upon their lives will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Amen. That has not been planted by you shall be rooted out in the name of Jesus. Amen. That Jesus Christ has already blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that is against us, that is contrary to us. He has taken it all out of the way, blotted it out with his blood, and nailed it to, with the death of the blood of the power. Everything that is manifesting in the life of every woman that is affecting our marriage, that is affecting our life in any way, oh Lord God, as far as we have not created that with anything that is manifesting in our life, Father Lord, we ask that Lord of Jesus see that. Amen. Lord Jesus, take away for something right here. And that we can return back to the original from the power of redemption, the same Amen. right and make that go. Make Amen. Go. And Amen. I ask that every marriage that this healing, that this that God will enter in and will every reason every in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank we you, Father. You and we bless you forever. Because Amen. we know you have answered us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your brother. Thank you for what you are using us to do. Thank you, Apostle Dr. Michael. I'll take this time out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Praise God. Amen and amen and amen. My goodness. Apostle Elishama, thank God for the way the Lord has used you for us today. Powerful, powerful, powerful. We are definitely going to continue another day in coaching our women. Want our women to know that one, they are not alone. That we are yeah. all in this together. So thank you so much for coming on the conversation. God thank bless you. you.